Hey, have you ever gone someplace totally by yourself for the first time ever, like not meeting anybody, like totally going by yourself, making huge life decisions, like where are you going to live after you sold your home, the last home that you raised your kids in and you were there for the longest amount of time after a divorce, after you know going through a lot of stressful moments while you were raising your kids and going through the divorce and all of the things that, you know, drugs and alcohol and all of those fears that we're probably all afraid of, all tumbling down. And then you sell your house and you get out from under everything. And then you need to decide where you're going to live. And you don't want to be living in a cold winter climate. You want to be in a warm winter climate. And you have nobody that wants to go with you, but you have this deep desire that you're going to do it anyways, and you really step out of your comfort zone, and you push through that fear, and you tackle it because you do not want to, you don't want to have all those regrets, you don't want to disappoint yourself and disappoint your life, and so you just do your best to do it anyways, even though you're trembling and you can actually see your hand trembling and you can feel your heart pounding in your chest. That's what I did. And I jumped on a plane and I flew to Myrtle Beach and I'm trembling on the on the plane. Now I like plane rides and I never trembled before and I was flying and I used to fly by myself to go visit people. But this time I wasn't visiting anybody. I was totally alone. And I rented a car for the first time all by myself. And then I had to um, get a place to stay. So I stayed in a yurt in one of those campgrounds. And oh my gosh, that night I was a bastard case. Talk about anxiety. All I could do was hear my heart beat, beat, beat. I don't know if I got any sleep because I was petrified. And The fear was just overtaking me. I couldn't wait till daylight so I could distract myself and get in the car. I was only there for three days. I had to stay in that yurt one more night. So I'm like, oh my, I didn't know how I was going to do that. So I got in the car and, you know, brand new place. I'd never been here before, but I just would take one step at a time. I didn't have any of the tools that I do now. I didn't know anything about tapping back then who I ended up learning from Gary Craig. And I didn't know anything about even just, I did know a little bit about breathing, deep breathing, but I didn't really practice it at all. I had my herbs with me. I had, and so I would take some of those, but oh my gosh, I needed all my herbs and I didn't have all my herbs. I just had a couple. So I went exploring anyways. I did it because I didn't, what was I going to do? Sit there and tremble all day? No, it could. Might as well tremble in the car. So I got in, trembling in the car, and I drove to Southport. That was where I wanted to check out the most because it was a little quaint town right on the water. Beautiful town. Little gazebo that they had, you know, concerts at night, little kayak shop, all the little shops. Anyways, and super affordable. But I didn't know anybody around. And I was already connected to different groups of spiritual people. And I didn't even know anybody around there at all within 60 miles or beyond. I would have been okay if I had somebody, just one person to reach out to. I stopped at a health food store because I was comfortable at health food stores because I'm an herbalist. And so I talked to the owner there and she was very nice. But and I explored around and I ended up deciding I made it. I made it home. I had such anxiety. I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to be able to do that again, but I'm going to have to because I need to find a place to live and I don't know where it's going to be. And so I ended up driving cross country eight times total. Now, at that time, I already had gone twice, but that was with my family, with my kids. And we were married at that time. And I ended up going cross country six more times. Four of those times was totally by myself. So, and never mind all the times I drove to Florida by myself. It's totally doable. But oh my gosh, I'm so grateful for all the tools I have now. 
and I didn't, when I look back, I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't have to go through all that suffering, all that incredible fear that I went through, but I did. And I had those experiences and now the confidence, when you see all that fear is just, you know, shadows overhanging what you're really all about and that confidence that's right there within you. It's a part of you and you just need to uncover it and it can be so quick and easy. A little bit uncomfortable at the very beginning, but then it just lifts away and oh, how relaxing and oh, <laughs> relieving because then you have nothing stopping you from making all your dreams and your desires to come true. That fear is not going to stop you from that. And you'll find a way to do what you really would like to do. So thanks for listening. Thanks for your attention. And breathing does help. So that could be your first step as to helping anxiety, fear, that trembling, when you need confidence and you don't know where to find it, and I'll be sharing some more. So I can't wait to share some more stories with you and share you with you the next. What's after the deep breathing? Because you can't deep breathe and talk at the same time. And function and like public speak to people or even get in front of a camera, you can't be deep breathing while you're doing that. So you need to know how to be okay when you can't be deep breathing all the time. Okay. See you soon.